Let's talk about Steelers Jags. Yeah, we had some true or false that you presented to Jack and I last week. Let's go through them real quick, see what happened. You said TJ Watt will force a turnover. No. True or false. He, no, did, he did not. Didn't. False. But it was close. Because anytime CJ Watt T- CJ TJ Watt gets to the quarterback, I was gasping. Mm. Anton I, Harrison did an okay job. He did. TJ Watt did get that one sack. I think it was one. It, it was a very timely. He he always does it. Mm-hmm. Comes in the perfect time. We're about we're lining. We're in field goal range for oh, some yeah. reason. We emptied out the backfield. Had like five receivers. No one to help Anton on TJ Watt. TJ Watt comes r- so quick. Mm. Just bends the edge. Sack out of field goal range. Crowd goes nuts. We have to punt. <laughs> Just that's such a TJ Watt play. Pretty sure that was so the, basically a turnover. Pretty yeah. Pretty sure that was the play that I had the jack cam on snapchat hmm. so yeah I, I mean i told jack after that i was like i know we're looking for a turnover that's basically a turnover we had three points there that's he true. just kicked us out of field goal range we had the punt punt went in the end zone there on the 20 yard line so we, that was only basically a 20 yard net punt yeah and if that didn't negate the uh, offsides call that the steelers got in the field goal attempt then trevor's red zone pick surely did but yeah. that's i digress um true or false etn will continue his two touchdown streak no, he should have. It was a sloppy game, wet game. He had one great catch. I don't think I've ever seen ETN catch a long ETN. touchdown pass like that, like he's fucking Austin Eckler out there. Yeah, he ran a go route on this, on the, as an X receiver, and they were in cover two. Got by him. Trevor threw a pretty ball. Dime. And he scored 56th longest, longest, uh, longest touchdown catch of his career, obviously. Something about longest <clears throat> play. I don't know. Yeah, but ETN would have had a rush touchdown if on first and goal we weren't passing the ball and Trevor wasn't tossing it up like it's jackpot in the pool. That's exactly what he did. Yeah, that was that was bad. Uh, He's good for a, a couple of those a season, I guess. I guess so. That's that's going to be his thing. True or false, we, were here of, we will hear Fire Canada chants. True. That was awesome. But we didn't hear him enough. It was only once I heard it. Yeah, it was only But once. it was loud. I think it was first half when Steelers fans were in absolute shambles over just the offense stalling. Um, Another run, run, pass, punt yeah, the, series. The penalties combined with that. It was lovely for me. Um, true or false, we will get into an altercation with Steelers fans. Kind of. Yeah. So, Almost. It so, was Andy. No, not really. Mitch, <laughs> I don't know what they were looking at me because I was the only one looking at them. Yeah, you kept looking back. I was Mitch, shocked. Mitch apparently directed something at them during the game. So they were they ended up going back and forth. Every time I looked over, if the Steelers were doing something good, they were flicking us off and like dancing and being cocky. And you could tell they were, someone said they were coked or coked out or something. That's a possibility. They looked like degenerates, like heavy degenerates. And maybe our age... And just total punks. And they obviously never looked over after the Jags did something good. Um, only if the Steelers did something good. And they were, you could tell they were pissed. So after the Jaguars picked off Trubisky and ran over and stole those fans' terrible towels and started waving them mm-hmm. on the field, and then Rayshon Jenkins slammed his <laughs> into the field, and which is an shit. amazing scene, an amazing clip that we now have forever. Um, I look over and he is, his face is, so they're like separated from us. Um, it's hard to explain, but we're on a ramp and then they're standing on like next to seats in the stadium, but there's like, you can't really get to each other unless you go like in and then around. I look over him after that. Cause I hear them just screaming at us. His face is so red <laughs> and he is flicking us off and like spits coming out of his mouth and he's pointing to the right of him, which is where if we were to each try to meet, that's where we would meet. He wanted to fight. At the, like the club section door? Yeah. yeah. He wanted to fight. He wanted us to meet him there as if we were the ones that stole the towels <laughs> and slammed him on the field. I was speechless when we did that. I wasn't like saying, ah, fuck y'all, we got your towels, we slammed them. Like, that's kind of sacrilegious, I feel like. take Now I love it, yeah. and I love that we, I secretly love that we did it, but we were with Steelers fans that we're very friendly with, so I'm not going to, like, get super excited about that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But the fact that we stole the fans' towels, those fans that they're not allowed to touch the players, but the players can steal their towel, wave it around <laughs> the field, slam it on the field. Yeah. What if the, that those towels are so sacred to that city's that culture? I was mind blown when I saw that. I said, "We're really, we're really them. We're dogs. We are dogs. We are the villains. <laughs> we are J villains, boy." That was. The one of the craziest things I've ever I haven't even seen any other the Ravens haven't ever done that no maybe they just know like that's a respect thing we're not gonna take their towels like, I don't think that's happened in a long time I've never seen that the fact that we stole and it obviously has to do with it goes back to George Pickens giving the Jags bulletin material yeah, they, saying we're hope defense so all because of them hope defense gets a pick they go hey you talking shit Look at this. We are waving your towels in your stadium, slamming it on the field, and showing you the ultimate sign. of You didn't respect us. We're showing your stadium the ultimate sign of disrespect after picking off your backup quarterback because we knocked your starter out of the game. Yeah, and the Steelers fans that were on the ramp with us, uh, not our friends, but other Steelers fans, they were irate, <laughs> like just absolutely yelling at the field. Uh, yelling at us. It like, was such loud booze. Yeah. It, <laughs> right. I don't think I've ever been at a game, away game, obviously, where a team has been that upset during like any point of the game. That just set it off even more. Never seen fans that mad. And it was like all game. I was loving it. I didn't even really process what they were doing until I saw Rayshon Jenkins slam it down. Because I think I was tweeting about the interception that I didn't see what transpired afterwards until Rayshon slammed it, stomped on it. And then I was like, well, yo, who took the towel? Because I couldn't see from where I was. I couldn't see who uh, took it. So I was like, yo, a Jags player took a towel. And I couldn't believe it myself. But that's when the dude started yelling. He's like, Jacksonville, you never won a fucking thing in your life. He's just screaming this at the field. They were and then a, so offended. Another fan was turning to us. I was like, hey. Don't tell me. Tell the players. I'm just a fan. Just so saying it like cheek, tongue in cheek. Um, they didn't like any of that shit. But um, and he was like, someone walked to the bathroom with me. I was like, oh yeah, I, I didn't were. want to go to the bathroom alone. We have we had never been in such hostile territory because usually we're losing. But this was another fucking level of being a Jags fan in an away stadium, and we are now officially villains, and we yeah. will continue to be. And I take that with pride. And I won't be, oh, Cleveland. Cleveland's pretty hostile, I heard. Especially in the dog pound. But I'm not worried about them. I was more worried about the Steelers. But that was, that was wild. Insane. I, I, would, say, I would say it was insane. Yeah, my, was, my mouth was wide <laughs> open. I was, did not believe what I was seeing. Um, and I think this could possibly be, I mean, Jags fans have always, Looked at the Steelers as a hated team, but did the Steelers ever look at us? Maybe, maybe since we beat them a couple times in 07 and in the playoffs, a couple times in 17, including the playoffs, only team to ever beat the Steelers in Heinz Field twice in one season, and we did it twice in two different seasons. Um, if the Steelers didn't respect us as a rival until now, maybe they do now. Um, it helps a rivalry if you guys are always playing each other, but... It, unless the Steelers keep winning their division, looks like we will be, um, it's going to be hard for us to play each other very often, once every four years. Mm -hmm. um, so I would love for this to be a yearly rivalry because it looks like a juicy one if it was. <laughs> um, but uh, might not play each other enough for it to be a ri real rivalry. Yeah, I was asked if I would come back. Like when we were walking out of the scene, I was asked if I would come back again. Uh, and I was like, yeah, for a playoff game. I'd definitely go back there. Can you imagine the scene there <laughs> for a playoff game? Um, but thoughts on the game? Only thing that could have made this day better would have been some sunlight. Everything I think everything else was perfect for me. Even even the little bit of rain that we got, I was my hands were cold, but whatever. It was glasses were covered in raindrops. Yeah, I wasn't Sucks. I wasn't cleaning my glasses at all because it would just got covered with rain. But um, ten times better than the Philly game last year, so I was I was content. Um, the standing room we were in better than some nosebleed seats that I've been in, in other stadiums. Um, I didn't, I know you didn't enjoy it, but I didn't mind the, the standing because you had the railing to lean on. I mean, I was just 
extremely hungover and my feet were killing me. That's yeah. the only reason I don't like it. The view was great. Yeah, my, my left foot was getting a little sore. But other than that, it was fine. Then you had the backdrop that we talked about earlier of the skyline, the trees and the hills. Then you turn back to the field and it's the Steelers going three and out. Everything was great. Just an ugly, slow, wet game, though. It was not a fun game to watch. Uh, a lot of punting, a lot of turnovers, um, and a lot of downtime because of refs. Oh, my God. Such a bad ref game. They fucked up so much. It was This game was not fun to watch until the fourth quarter. Yeah. Just, not fun at all. Even even waiting for the t- last two minutes to go out, was it took forever. I was just waiting to get my LeBron picture, and it took forever to even get that. But – Bunch of missed throws, underthrown passes. Steelers just letting our defense cook. So everything that Jack's been saying about the Steelers, we got to witness live. It was true. Nothing got better. Got fired Canada chance. We injured Kenny. And then Trubisky. Not happy about that. Yeah. He's going to play Thursday. He said it himself. But um, Trubisky took over and was slinging the ball on one of the drives. And then he came back to earth and threw picks to us. Um we survived T.J. Watt, though, which was my biggest worry because I said that if the game was close, T.J. Watt could just have one play and just end the game for us. But we survived it um, by that last field goal that put us up by 10 because this game was way too close the whole time. It was like 3-0, 6-0, 9-3, 9-6. It was scary. It was scary the whole fucking game. Now, even, even when the Steelers' offense came out, even though I wasn't worried about that, I was worried when we got on the field because – we just weren't doing anything either. And then I thought the game would be over when Trevor threw that touchdown pass at ETN, and then Trubisky just goes down there and matches it, and I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Typical Jacks. Um, but we did learn Trevor. Trevor Travis ETN is a superstar, and our third pick in the draft is a fumbling machine. I pray that Doug Peterson seen enough in Tank Bigsby, at least at this point in the season, that he'll give Dearness Johnson more snaps as the backup to ETN. But overall, it's a much-needed bye week. The Jags have been through hell. Um, the two London games, um, going to New Orleans, going to Pitt, it was a lot. And they came out undefeated, which is insane. So everyone's going to get their rest. They're going to come back healthy. Big home game against the Niners. Uh, a reeling Niners. Three straight losses. Brock Purdy looks human, looks like the 49ers system is failing. Maybe that's why they went and got Chase Young because they need what the Steelers have right now in a defense that has to go score points because the offense can't. (laughs) That's what I'm telling myself now and then until it's like 30, 27. But other than that, just looking forward to this offensive line rotation and what we can do second half of the season because everything's been great so far. Uh, let me explain uh, kind of the background of the intro for today's podcast. It is the instrumental for a song called Renegade, which Jack was hyping up. Jack and his brother Mitchell were hyping up for me prior to the game. They said, do you know what Renegade is? I said, no. What is it? We can't tell you. You'll have to see in the game. And I said, when will it be played? I don't know. It might not be played. (laughs) (laughs) I said, why? They said, it has to be the right situation. So I'm guessing the different scenarios. Is it when you guys score a touchdown? Is it when you guys get a turnover? Maybe a defensive score? They kept saying, no, no, no. You'll see. It never happened. It never got played. And it's because Renegade is played, and it's a pretty sick song, and I kind of like it. But it's it's a song that's played in Heinz Field when it's the fourth quarter. Maybe the Steelers just scored, and they need a big big defensive stop, or the uh, they're down, um, or they're down like a touchdown or a field goal, and they they need to go score. <clears throat> but it's only at the start of the fourth. Not the start, any any time in the fourth, any time oh. like when the game is like about to be decided, mm. they play that and the the crowd starts waving their towels and they go crazy. So I took that instrumental and I used it as the background for the intro for this for this podcast. As you should, 
the last villain of the weekend. Uh, yeah, um, I, I kind of feel responsible, kind of, for the hero, the hero defense, like our team figuring out about that. You know why? Why? Because I tagged them in the in the interview on Twitter. Damn. Yeah, I did that. You're him, boy. I did that. Fucking you, boy. Uh, yeah, let's that dude, boy. let's <laughs> let's hear uh, Jack's take on the either. I'm not sure what he's what he's talked about in this two minutes that he left. If it's the trip and the game, probably like I knew this was gonna happen. <laughs> or just one. Let's uh, see what Jack said in the only way that Jack says it. All right, Jack here. Um, <laughs> still in Pittsburgh. Sorry. Steelers Jags game. We were there, obviously. Um, weather was bad during the game, but I liked it. It felt like gritty Pittsburgh weather. Uh, kind of described how the game went to ugly uh as all Steeler games tend to be nowadays um not going to complain about the refs because i hate when people complain about the refs but um even if the refs were favorable to the Steelers we wouldn't have won anyway uh right. Jags won as is a i guess it wasn't a blowout i kept saying it was going to be a blowout it was only a 10 point win but, I mean, when you play Trubisky for an entire half, you can't expect to win. So, uh, also, Minka went out, which he already declared out for this week, which I'm sad about. But Kenny's playing. I know Kenny got hurt uh, right before half, and his rib looked bad. But he already declared today that he is playing on Thursday night because he's him. <laughs> um, the weekend... I think it was a good trip. I guess it's really up to you guys, as I was kind of your host here. Um, favorite part was probably <laughs> probably Mitch in the casino. Probably should have stopped him from <laughs> wagering what he did, but uh, it was entertaining, so I let it go. <laughs> um, also, Eric in the shower. <laughs> that was good. Uh, I also like the no park tour because I enjoy pirates history i don't know if you guys probably don't but i guess it was entertaining enough uh the weather was perfect actually too so i think gonna say it was a good trip although you guys have been on a million of these weekend trips for games so i don't know how it compares interested to see what you guys say um i have nothing else to say i guess i'll go goodbye no, love you. Love you. Oh, oh my God! Crazy. Wow, that's crazy. That is. Um, so he was referring to Mitchell. Uh, no, sorry, Mitch, our friend Mitch, not his brother Mitchell, who was on the trip with us, who kept putting a hundred dollars on red or black, depending on how he felt, and he'd lose it and have to put another hundred just to get it back. Yeah. And then he'd like that he just won, so he'd do it again. Right. Maybe he'd go up a hundred, then he'd do it again, lose a hundred. So it was a roller coaster. Him at the casino. Yeah, he did it on Saturday. Uh, the guy we were with, uh, he like had this strategy looking up at the screen and he was hitting it every time. He's like, I'm going to wait a couple. He has this like Kentucky accent. He's like, I'm going to wait a couple turns. Who does? Corey that was with us from Houston. Oh, like, that guy. Yeah, him. Uh, he's a guy I went to like Bengals game with and he met us at Houston. Are you Houston. talking about Mitch? Uh, no, but he was playing with Mitch and he was hitting every single time. And then when Mitch lost and then put the $100 bill, like, we're like, no, don't do it. Sucks the hundred dollar bill in, puts it on red. It's black. The dude behind me said it was gonna be black. It was black, oh, and no. Mitch fucking's like, "Let's go fuck home." But yeah, it's tough. It's tough for Mitch. Uh, so Jack referenced PNC Park tour. Yes, that was a lot of fun. We agreed. Uh, Jack, you probably hear us talk about that. Um, gritty weather, definitely. Um, where it ranks? Okay, so I definitely haven't been on many trips as Eric, but. When I was ranking it with New Orleans, it's right up there for me. I told Eric I have, like, severe post-trip depression. Mm. And he made a good point that maybe it's because I don't have the next one to look forward to like I did after New Orleans. And I I think that's the case. I, I am a fan of being with a small group. And it kind of, you get to bond more. And I like that aspect of this trip a lot and the city was 
a lot more aesthetically pleasing. It was different. It's hard. They're just completely different trips. So it's hard to compare. New Orleans was a party trip and I had a lot of fun partying and, but Pittsburgh was more, I guess, more wholesome <laughs> of a, of an outing. Yeah. And I'm also a sucker for that. Like I said, it was a romantic comedy. Um, yeah, I will look back on this trip very fondly. Yeah. Um, I think I, I might put it above New Orleans. I'm not sure. As far as someone asked me, as far as stadiums, it's top five for me. Uh, I, for these away trips, I'm usually not with friends. I usually like go solo and then meet <clears throat> Jags fans out there. So this trip, New Orleans, I'm trying to think. Of, uh, oh, I went on. I went to Cincinnati for a BCB trip, but I didn't have many friends go to that either. So a lot of the times, I'm just out there wandering solo and whatever happens in my experiences happens so it's a nice change of pace to have you know a lot of friends actually go out to the ones that I go out to these last two trips so they're definitely up there for me in terms of that the camaraderie and having people I know out there with me but um, as far as the stadiums yeah there's there's definitely better cities and stadiums that I've been to but Pittsburgh I, I told somebody Pittsburgh's definitely top five New Orleans, I wouldn't put in the top five as far as the stadium experiences. Um, just because I'm in love with Seattle. Seattle's just – Seattle's the only stadium that I've been to where they stood all game. They never sat down. Didn't matter if it was dead ball. Didn't matter if they turned it over. I don't think they did. But did they get louder than New Orleans? It's, New Orleans is tough to be louder than just because that, that dome – just makes everything bounce off and smack you back in the face. So it's hard to remember. Seattle was very loud. I just can't remember in comparison to New Orleans because it was 2021 and my brain has been through a lot. But the top three definitely are Saints, um, Seattle, and Kansas City. But had a fun time in Pittsburgh, but my three-day max was met. I was ready to go. 